Hello and welcome to the Aero-V engine assembly video series. I'm Joe Norris at Sonics Aircraft LLC. In this series of video segments, we are going to walk through the assembly of an Aero-V engine. We will be following the sequence called out in the Aero-V assembly manual. The manuals get updated much more often than the video series. So if there is a case where the manual and the video series disagree, your manual that came with your engine is the guide for you to follow. But in general, all of the steps that we have in the manual will be shown in the video series. We hope you enjoy the video series. We hope you enjoy putting together your Aero-V engine. And we look forward to seeing your airplane flying. In this segment, we are going to assemble our connecting rods onto our previously assembled crankshaft. Here's our crankshaft that we assembled in the previous segments, and here's the parts we're going to use. Now, we get rods from two different suppliers, so uh, you may see a different style bolt in your particular engine kit. This particular set of rods has these star bolts that have a, a multi-point, 12-point uh, star type uh, fastener on it. Uh, the other uh, sets of rods that we have actually have a, a hex nut type fastener on it. So um, both styles of rods are covered in our manual. So uh, depending on which style you have, you just follow the instructions in the manual that apply to the rods that you have. The rods are actually machined in matched sets. So when you look at a connecting rod, you'll have the rod itself and you'll have the uh, rod cap. Now on the rod and on the cap, there's a, a set of numbers stamped. And on this rod, it's these numbers right here on the end. The numbers themselves are not critical. The number doesn't mean anything other than to match the rod with the rod cap. So you want to make sure that you always put the rod together with a matching number on the rod and the rod cap. And the numbers have to always be on the same side. You don't want to flip the rod cap over so that the numbers aren't lined up. You want to make sure you always assemble your rod uh, regardless of which rod you're using. You'll use the match set so that the numbers match and the numbers are aligned with the rod. We'll also use these numbers on this particular set of rods. We'll actually use these numbers also to get the rod properly oriented on the crank uh, because the rods have to go on at a certain orientation. Uh, some of the rods will actually have a little bump cast into them on the shaft of the rod here. Uh, these particular rods don't have the bump so we just go by the numbers. and We'll assemble the rods using these numbers as our guide not only to get the rod set matched but also to get the rod properly uh, oriented on the crankshaft. So we've also got our rod bearings. The rod bearings come in halves, just like the, uh, the cap and the rod itself. We have two halves of a rod bearing here. You'll notice on the rod bearing that there's this little stamped uh, tab on the uh, uh, one side of the bearing. That uh, is kind of an anti-rotation tab, and when we assemble the bearing into the rod, that tab will go into a matching slot that's either on the rod or on the rod cap. So that'll give us the proper uh, alignment of the bearing in our rod. So what we'll do is we'll take our rod, take a nice clean rag, and just wipe that area out where the bearing is going to seat. We want to make sure there's no oil or no other foreign material or debris in there. So we'll wipe that down real good. We'll take our rod cap, and we'll also do the same thing there. We'll wipe that down real good. Make sure that's nice and clean. And then we'll assemble our rod bearings into our rod and our rod cap. So again, we'll take our bearing half. We'll align our little uh, stamped tab into the slot in the uh, rod cap in this case. And we just push it down in there with our hands so that the ends are flush. And that's all there is to it. Just the rod bearing is properly assembled. You just push it right in there. We'll take our rod half, the actual rod itself. Again, there's a notch that is aligned with the little tab on the rod bearing. Line the tab up and just set the rod bearing down in there, make sure the ends are nice and flush, and our bearing is assembled. That's all there is to that. Now, before we put our rod onto our uh, crankshaft, we need to put a little bit of lubrication in these bearings. Now, again, we use uh, just some white lithium grease. We'll just paint it on there with a little uh, brush here. Get that in there. You can also use your favorite engine assembly lube. If you're an engine uh, assembler and you have some favorite lube that you want to use uh, 
uh, rather than the lithium grease, that's fine. Just make sure you do get some lubrication in there. That's uh, how we do that. Also, with these particular rod bolts that we're using, with these uh, the star type rod bolts, we need to lubricate these threads. This particular rod requires a lubrication of the thread. What we're going to use for that is some um, Molly Lube. Uh, this is a particular kind just came from uh, the local auto parts store. Um, you see it's a Molly EP grease. It's uh, nice and black, so be ready to clean your hands off when you finish using that. And we're just going to use our finger and put a little bit on the end of our finger, and we're just going to wipe a little bit of that on our threads to make sure that those threads are nicely lubed. Just like that. Take our other bolt. Rub some grease on there, get that nice and lubed up. Put just a little bit more on there. Just enough so that those threads aren't dry. And then we're ready to assemble. We'll wipe that off. Now, this is the way I want to orient the crank for my assembly. Now, as I'm looking at it, my prop hub is to my right. And that's this is going to be the top of our crankshaft oriented that way. And this will show you in the manual. There's a picture of this to get you lined up the right way. So I want my prop hub on my right. So we've got our rod and our cap. We're going to assemble it so that our numbers are up. So we'll get those aligned. Make sure it's the same number. We'll put our cap on our bearing journal. Get our rod on there. Hand thread our bolts in to get us started. Flip over and get the other bolt started here. I'm just going to use a regular ratchet here and a socket just to get them down to uh, just contact tight here and then we'll put our torque wrench on them and, and do our torque sequence. There, we just made contact, so we can switch our socket over to our torque wrench. Now these uh, star type bolts are actually torqued in steps. Rather than bringing them up to a final torque in one operation, we're going to do it in several steps. So our first step is 8 pound-feet. So we've got our pound-foot torque wrench, and we're set to 8 pound-feet. And we're going to just bring them up till it clicks. Molly lube out of the way. There we go, eight, very light. Put on the other bolt, get her down to where she makes contact again. And there's our eight pound feed. That's our first torque step on these star type connecting rod bolts. Our next step is 15 pound feet. So we've reset our torque wrench to 15 pound feet and we'll do the bolts again. There's the click. Flip over to the other one. There's the click. That's our second step, 15 pound, pound feet. And then we'll do our third step, which is 24. Reset our torque wrench to 24. There's 24 on that one. Twenty-four on that one. And then our final step is 38 pound feet. So we once again reset our torque wrench. 38. There's 38 on that one. Then come over to this side. 
And there's 38 on that one. Now, our bolts are torqued. Our numbers are oriented correctly. Rod moves nice and free on the crankshaft. That rod's all set. We just repeat that process with the three other rods and our rods are installed on our crank.